Okay, why is it so exciting to make a make a seal? <laughs> anybody, anybody? Nope. Yes. Because you finish brie You finish brie amazing. Okay, so what's special about finishing brie or any part of the Torah? Is it like finishing a regular book? Yes. Um. Well, we're learning a lot about our history, and we're kind of celebrating. Amazing. So. Yes. It's also kind of like we accomplished something that's like big in our Jewish. Correct. Any time we have a, a, an accomplishment of learning something is always special, and I, I totally agree, especially when it's something towards our, our, Ju our Judaism, it's, it's extra special. Um, so you've now finished Sefer Bereshit, so I want to ask you a question, okay? So there are some Mepharsh and some commentaries that refer to Sefer Bereshit as, as the book of creation. Now, you've learned Sefer Bereshit. How many, how many, does anybody know how many Prakam are in Sefer Bereshit? Anybody know? Yes. The last oh boy. Uh, yes. 50. Oh, 50. 40, 40 something. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. 49. No. 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 Huh? 12. No, more. No, you're thinking partial. Yes. No, 50. Oh, wait. Is it 50? Jake, no, 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 no. Then it's 50. Yeah. Okay. So, of the 50 Prakam, how many of the Prakam talk about creation? Talk about actually the debris uh, 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 of, of creating the world? Just Bereshit. Right, and not even the whole Parsha, right? Only the very beginning. So isn't it misleading if I gave you a book? This is the book of creation. And only the very first chapter talks about creation. And the rest of it talks about something completely different. Isn't that like misleading? Like yeah, if you bought a yeah. book like The Great Party, the first chapter talks about the party, and the rest of the book just talks about after the party. Isn't that like misleading? Yeah. So how is it? How do we understand? Now that we've learned the entire Sefer Bereshit, how is the whole safer, the whole book related to creation? What do you think? Everyone hear the question? It's misleading the topic. The title says creation, but the whole thing doesn't talk about it. Yes? It still has some signs, like who's talking about faith in Hashem and Okay, faith in Hashem, also, beautiful. That's also a sign of, of Okay, creation, of how do we creation use the word? Also, and also um, saying Shema. Okay. Um, no, not small. Um, saying the, like, saying brachas. Okay, it's, beautiful. It's, it's like giving thanks to stuff that he created. Okay, beautiful. Yes? Um, maybe it's not, like, maybe it's in creation as, uh, as in, like, creating, because, like, the whole creation says, like, it goes through, like, it goes through, like, Avram's light and Yitzhak's light. Good. And, um, and Yaakov's light and Yosef's light. So maybe it's, like, saying not only, like, Specifically, like creation of like the world, but also like the creation of like the foundation of 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 um, Jewish like like Jew like. You're saying a great point, by the way. I love it. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Okay, let's say I I have a daughter who just got a driver's license. Now let's say she didn't. Okay, and I decided to, buy, which I didn't, I buy her a brand new car. Beautiful brand new car, but I never tell her to use it. Is it a good gift or not a good gift? Not a good one. It's a beautiful, beautiful car. I mean, you have to be grateful. It, it, it can be grateful, but what's the point if I don't know how to use the car, right? I can't get from point A to point B because I don't know how to use the car. So what, what Chazal, the sages, tell us, and you know, you mentioned this, you talked about the history of the Jewish people that starts in Sefer Bereshi. The Torah talks about the creation of the world. But then it tells us how to live in this world. The values we learned from the Abbas and Yimos, from Avram and Sarah. They had challenges, right? They had challenges about, when, about having a baby. They had, if you look at all the Abbas and Yimos, they had trials and tribulations. But we see their Amuna. We saw how people treated each other. So we learn from the Sefer what's part of creation. It's not just we have a physical world, but how do we utilize that world? Which, is, Mendel, I think is what you're saying, right? It's, it's we have the car, but now we're learning how to drive that car, not to, to get from point A to point B. But I'll tell you one last thing, then I want you to have your party. I just saw a Gemara in Shabbos, Masecha Shabbos, Peiches, that says something amazing. That when Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Har Sinai to get the Torah, the Malachim were upset. The Malachim said, how can you possibly give the Holy Torah to humans? How could this possibly be? It's such a special thing. It precedes the history of the world, and you're giving it to the human beings to where Moshe engaged in a conversation with the Malachim to show them why it's really written for us, 
to which the Malachim agreed at the end of the day. But I think which is important for us to realize is how special it is. You know, we, we made it, you're making the scene which is so, so special. But I want you to realize what you learned. You learned how to live in this world. But to realize every single word was a gift from Hashem to us. That even the Malachim, the angels in Shemaim were upset and jealous that we got and they don't have it. And it's a special opportunity you have every single day when you learn. You have that opportunity for that special gift. Mazel tov to all of you. I'm very proud of you. And mazel tov. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, before I call you all up to deliver your Dibre Torah that you worked really hard on, I wanted to share one of my own. I know I chose a topic that a lot of you also chose this year, but I chose the topic of making the best of a situation. Because this year, learning in the classroom looked very different. And we had to work on the same skills, and we wanted to accomplish the same goals. And um, Rabbi Drandoff is here. He is um, my witness that he told us in the beginning of the year, like, it's OK if you don't get to all of it, right? But we got to all of it. You guys finished Sefer Breshi. You learned a lot of skills this year. And we also included some of the skills we learned in Parsha, right? We learned the skill of writing a Dvar Torah. And this one you had to do without my leading questions, and you all did a really good job. I like how you all have your own style of writing by now. Um, but you really learned how to make the best of a situation this year, just like we talked about with Yosef, that he found himself in a situation that he didn't want to be in, right? That most people could have been upset or angry or you know, found bad ways to deal with their um, big feelings. And we had a lot of big feelings in the beginning of the year, right? This wasn't an easy adjustment coming back to school, social distancing, wearing masks, but you guys were amazing. And you really pushed through and accomplished your goals and learned how to do things on Google Classroom and learned how to do Chavrusa without sitting next to each other. And that's a lot to be proud of. So I'm really proud of all of you for all of the goals that you accomplished this year and for how hard you worked to get to this point. And I'm really looking forward to hearing from all of you what lessons you took out of Kumash this year. That was a big part of what we learned in fifth grade, of learning that everything that you learn every day can be applied to your life. And I love the way that you guys have learned to do that over the course of the year. So now we're going to hear from our wonderful fifth graders. Benaya, you're up first. I ask everyone to speak nice and loud for the ice. As loud as you can. Brotherly love is something important because you have your brothers wherever you are. They're like friends that can always play with you. In Perak 42, Pasuk 3, it says, And Yosef's brothers went down to buy food from, from Egypt. Rashi wants to know, why does the Pasuk say, and Yosef's brothers, and not Yaakov's brothers, not Yaakov's son? Rashi answers that the brothers went down to Egypt with love for finding and buying Yosef. We can learn from this that brotherly love is really important. Jacob. This year I've learned the story of 
of Joseph. In paragraph 49, it says, when they give the blessing in the Yisrael Yaakov, it goes to all the brothers in eighth order. Then it goes to Yosefah, who warns and teaches Torah, and then Zebulun, that supports them financially. But Yosefah is younger. Verno has a question on why does Zebulun go first, even though Zebulun is younger? But Verno's answer is that supporting Torah is just as good as learning Torah. So the Torah is teaching us a lesson that one can learn Torah, but one can also be just as good at supporting it financially. An example is that the Columbus Torah Academy sponsors dinner. They often make someone who is a Torah supporter say, say things about the dinner. Thanks for listening to my Divine Torah. Have a safe and fantastic rest of your day. Um, Rena, come on up. The power of faith. This year, one of the many things we, we learned was Yosef and his faith in Hashem. When Yosef was sold and then went to jail, he, he knew it was Hashem's, all Hashem's plan. When he was in jail and, and he made the best of, be, best of, of being a slave, Hashem helped him. I know someone who is, who is sick and she, and she has young kids, so, so every chance she gets, she makes the best of it. She is going on vacation, but she may she may not be able to do everything. But what what she can do, she is going to go and make the best of it. In the end, everything turns around for you. So if, and he, and he can forget his he can forgive his bro, brothers and see his father and family who he did not see in t- for twenty two years. I hope Hashem helps her helps her so she she can get better soon. I, I can learn from it, both of these people that that whatever situation I am in, I should believe in Hashem, Hashem and make and and he will help help me. Thank you, Mrs. Kellum, for helping me grow and learn and sh- and showing me the real message of faith and how that can affect someone as a person. rather never admit that you did something wrong and never learn from your mistakes? Or would you rather be able to admit what you did wrong and learn from your mistakes? We learned this year about the brachos of Yaakov's children. In Reuven's bracha, Yaakov recalls the incident of when Reuven moved to Yaakov's bed. Rashi says that even though Reuven apologized, he still didn't learn from his mistakes and that he has not changed since that incident. It is so important to learn from your mistakes instead of denying them because it makes you that much of a better person. A good person is one that can improve constantly and can admit what they did. For example, let's say that you did not get a good grade on your test because you didn't study. You, didn't study. you can either blame it on why you didn't study and say it wasn't your fault, but the right thing to do is to figure out how you can make sure next time you can get a better grade on that test. I hope that now you all learn that you should learn from your mistakes instead of like, saying that you didn't do it. The power of a good deed. This year in Sumash, we learned about the power of a good deed. And how about one good deed to le- can lead to so many more. When someone does a good deed, not only does it make a person feel special and honored, but it also leaves you with an amazing feeling in your heart. This situation comes up a lot in our current everyday lives. But right now we're going way back to when this happened to Yosef. When Yosef was in jail, he made the best of his situation by being kind to the guards, which got him in a higher position. Then he interprets the baker and butler's dreams. The butler feels happy when he gets his job back. So many years later, he reminds Paro when he has his dreams. Um, then Paro is so happy that he makes Yosef by story. Then Yosef sent Um, saved the lands of Egypt. It's all one good deed after another. There's a story called One Good Deed, and it's about a little boy picking berries, and he gives some to his old neighbor who can't pick her own berries. His neighbor makes a pie and gives the extra pie to her neighbor. Then he does something for someone else, and it keeps on going on and on and on, until it comes back to that little boy. Sometimes you do a good deed for someone else, and you might have taken very little time to do. But that little ripple in that big ocean can lead to so much more. So the next time you see an opportunity to do a good deed, 
just know that you could be at the start of a big chain of pregnancy. Keeping a promise. This year I learned from Chumash that Yosef promises Yaakov he will bury him in Canaan. When Yaakov dies, Yosef goes and asks Paro if he can go and bury Yaakov in Canaan. Yaakov, Paro answers, yes, because you promised. Rashi asks, why does it say because you promised? Would it matter because you promised? Rashi answers, to show that Paro would not have let Yosef go if he had not promised. It shows that Paro is loyal because Yosef promised. Promise showed that you can't break promises. We, we can learn from this that the promises are so important they should not break them. An example is, let's say you tell your sibling, if you run down our buck in one minute, I promise you I'd give you $10. And you do not think that they were able to do it. And if they did do that, then you owe them $10. Then you have to give them, if they did, that you give them the money. You can't change what you said. Elior, you can keep your glasses on if you need to. That's okay. It might be easier to see your paper that way. It's good we have this on video. It's fun to remember little mishaps. This year we learned the story of Yosef. When Yosef was sold as a slave, he had to do hard work, but he still believed in Hashem, and he didn't complain. That's an example of making the best of a situation. Yosef went from a wealthy family to a slave in a different country that he didn't know the language of, and his brothers tortured him. He could have been bitter and mad about it, but he made the best of the situation, and he would have rather not been a slave, but he accepted his new life how it is. We can learn from this that if we are in a situation that we aren't happy with, we should like try to be like Yosef and make best of the situation. Well, you were, I mean, look at you making the best <laughs> I know, of the situation. Right? You could have changed what she wrote. Like you had a difficult obstacle to overcome today and you showed up. So I'm really proud of you. Have you ever been called out or embarrassed before? You probably have. I've decided to do my part on not embarrassing others. I believe this is an important topic because I grew up being the youngest of my seven siblings. And growing up with all these siblings gives me a good understanding of what being called out feels like. Um, when Yosef was planning on telling his brothers his true identity, he waited until Yosef's servants left the room 
so he would not call out his brothers. This makes me think Yosef must have had such strong loyalty for people to see that even when his brothers were bad, were so bad and evil to him, to Yosef, his whole life, he was still good to his brothers. I've learned so much about not embarrassing others. When you are doing this to someone, you are bringing something up or talking about something this person does not want to be brought up. Therefore, they begin get, getting these bad feelings. Because of this, I can strongly say I've learned a lot about embarrassing others. I have learned that it's never okay to do this in any situation. All right, Bella. Make the best of the situation. This year, so much when we learned, um, when we learned how Yosef was sold, he didn't complain, but he was going with whatever his friend wanted him to do. An example we is we can learn from this is to always trust Hashem and believe that He will help you when you are in a bad situation. And another example is when well, this is when Yosef's life was. In Yosef's life, at one point, his brothers hated him. They put him in the pit, then sold him. But the whole time, he made the best of the situation and ended up with a good fortune. And a lesson I can learn from this is when I, I find myself in a bad situation, I will make the best of it and hope Hashem helps and does his part to make things turn out for the good. so jealous that they thought about throwing Yosef in a pit and killing him, but Reuben said, don't kill him. A personal example of this is sometimes I feel like Bella is my mom's favorite, favorite, and I sometimes want to destroy her stuff, but I hold myself back, and I realize that she's still my sister and I care about her. A lesson we can learn is to not do something out of jealousy that you might regret. from your beliefs. You can learn a lot by studying ancestry. And um, from Yosef, I think it shows how much belief, even when the worst possible things um, happen. When he throws up into the pit, um, or when Miss, uh, Mo Mrs. Potiphar and the butler, I admire that no matter what happens, he always uh, has um, Shema's song. Um, he's never down. He always um, does what he knows is right. Um, he's sold by his brothers and still finds a good in a situation. Not all people can um, find good in situations like that. And um, when he um, and when he's dying, he um, he he knows they're going out and back to Canaan, um, and he trusts God and says, "When you go back to Canaan, and, and not if." 
we go back. I learned that everything is done for a reason. And all and you just see space. Let, um like you see that. Um what you saw for the bad, Hashem saw for the good. Just remember, everything's done for a reason. You just have to find the good in it. things we learned this year was Yosef was sold off to Egypt and didn't know how to speak the language and also didn't know anything about the gifts. For example, Yosef had somewhat of a good life, but his own brother sold him off, sold him off um, to some merchant to an unknown place, but Yosef didn't get depressed or angry for what happened. He made the best of the situation, and like the Pusuk says, Yosef tried to be the best best slave by all the rules and, and, and do all that he needed to do. A lesson you can learn, learn, learn is that you have the power to make the best of the situation into a good one. Like, for example, if I was on a call with my friends and then the power goes out, I, um, I would get really annoyed and, and bored. Um, if that happened, I would go to my brother and ask him to play a game with me. And I, most likely, I would realize that I would have that I was having fun and it would have been a really good time. Really nice job, guys. Every single one of you brought home a really, really good lesson.